I, my name is Derek Lopez. I'm one of the youth pastors at, at Shepherd Church. Raise your hand. Have you ever been to Shepherd Church? I got my homies here. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Don't be afraid. There you go. I see you, Robert. Okay. Um, but, uh, but Shepherd Church is my home. And when I was a junior in high school, the Lord took a hold of my heart and has transformed me ever since. And now I'm blessed to, to be able to, to share that same love and that same, that same heart with others. And so I'm honored to be here with you all. I'm sorry that you guys woke up to some, to some scary news, to some crazy news, but I'm, I respect every single one of you guys for being here. And I want you guys to know that, that, this, that this school loves you and, and, and puts you in a safe place, okay? And so I'm, I'm thankful that you guys are here. I'm thankful that you're present. And um, I know that Daniel told me that throughout this whole semester, you guys are going to be trying to answer questions, right? Questions about God, questions about the Bible, whatnot. And so my question for today is, why do we pray? Why do we pray? And I think that's a really good question to have. Why do we pray if God already knows what we, need, what we want and what we need? Why do we pray if we can't hear God respond back to us? Why do we pray if sometimes we don't feel like we're being answered? And all of those are great questions. And I can't answer every single question. I don't know it all. But what I can do is do my best to show you what God's word has to say about prayer. But this is what I believe to be true about prayer. And I hope eventually it could be true for you too. Prayer will shape you, change you, and bless you if you believe in its power. Prayer will shape you, change you, and bless you if you believe in its power. And today I want us to, to see the words of Jesus and what Jesus has to say about prayer in Luke chapter 11. It'll be up on the screens. And it says this in verse 1. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place. And when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. And he said to them, when you pray, and most of you know this, most of you have heard this before, but Jesus says, when you pray, say this, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. And lead us not into temptation. And all God's people said, amen. And really quickly, if, if you feel like you're not good at prayer or don't know what to say in prayer, I want you to know that that's okay. That even people who follow Jesus faithfully still needed help. Raise your hand if you have a hard time praying. It's okay, be honest. Thank you for your honesty. Thank you for your courage. Praying can be hard. Praying can be scary. But Jesus gives us a great template to use. Why? Because he knows that we need help. And, and these disciples, they're inspired as Jesus is praying, and, and they look to their great teacher and say, Lord, teach us how to pray. Not just me, not just the disciple asking, but teach all of us how to pray. And they go to the best teacher that they can find, right? How many of you would agree that Jesus is the best teacher you could find? That's like asking Tom Brady to teach you how to throw a football, or asking Steph Curry how to teach you to shoot a basketball, or asking Bob Ross to teach you how to paint, okay? Do you guys know who Bob Ross is? Yes? Okay, cool. I'm still relevant. Praise God. Um, <laughs> but they go to Jesus. Sorry, I'll try not to move so that this doesn't go like this, okay? Um, but they go to Jesus, the great teacher, and he basically gives them a great foundation for what your prayers should look like. And quick side note, if your prayers don't look like this, that is okay, still pray anyways. But I think this is a great foundation for how we can pray and what to say when we talk with God. We pray because it forms the way we see God. I have a couple points, and that's my first one. We pray because it forms the way we see God. And I say that because it helps us to know who God is. Prayer helps us to know who God is. Prayer helps us to see how great and powerful he is. And prayer helps us to realize that when we speak, he listens. Friends, when, when you speak to God, he listens to you. He doesn't ignore you. He listens to you. And the first thing in this prayer Jesus tells us to do is to call God Father. And I think he does this to show us that God is more than just the creator of the universe. He's more than just a king. He's more than just the big guy upstairs. It's deeper than that. And he's actually closer to us than we realize. Jesus says that he's our father, and I believe that to be true because he's not only the one who made us, but he's the one who knows us best. Some of you might have best friends in the room. Some of you might have great parents, but I promise you, God knows you best. And when you talk to somebody, it's important to know who you're talking to, right? And it's important to know their title. It's important because it shapes the way you view them. It shapes the things you say, and it also shapes the way you respond. 
And so we call, we call God Father. And for instance, if all of us were to write a letter to our parent, we wouldn't start the letter by addressing our parent by the occupation or the job that they have, right? That'd be kind of awkward. That'd be kind of weird. Why? Because you have a closer relationship with your parent. My dad does air conditioning. Praise God for air conditioning, right? Especially when it's super hot. We all, we all need it. We all need it. Okay, but I don't address my dad as Mike, the AC guy. One, because that's weird. But two, I have a stronger relationship with my dad, right? Because of his title, I should have a stronger relationship and a better relationship than just any other person or a client or a coworker. Him being my father signifies that he has a significant amount of influence in my life. My dad knows me. My dad cares for me. My dad loves me. And calling God father means he's responsible for you. Calling God father means that he wants to be active in every single one of your life. Calling God father means that he's approachable. Maybe some of us, because of our sins or because of the way we think or what we know, feel like we can't approach God. No, prayer shows us that we can approach God as our father who will listen to us and care for us, amen? So when we go to prayer, we realize that the God of the universe loves us so much. He wants a relationship with us, but he also wants us to call him father because he watches and cares for us daily. So our father in heaven, then it says, hallowed be your name. And hallowed is just a fancy way of saying holy, right? And we call God holy because he's set apart. He's different. He's perfect. He's good all the time. And all the time he's good. And we call him holy because we respect him. Raise your hand if you respect your parents. Okay, I, sh I should see way more hands in the room. Okay, I don't call Mike the <laughs> I don't call Mike the AC guy, and I definitely don't call my dad by his first name. He he'd smack the you know what out of me. Okay, but I respect my dad. I call him father. I call him pops. I call him dad. Okay, and so hallowed be your name means that we 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 keep God with reverence, we refer to him as holy. So our Father, hallowed be your name. And then it says, your kingdom come. And in other gospels, it'll say, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, right? Raise your hand if you've heard that before. Okay, this is known as the Lord's Prayer. And right now, Jesus' prayer is teaching us that we can ask for God's power to be displayed and used all over the world. That the God of the universe, the God who created you, the God who formed you, the God who made the great mountains and the waves, that you can ask for his power to come down onto this earth and to bless other people. That your prayer has that much power. Isn't that amazing? Not because you're special, not because you're good, but because he is great and he has control of it all. And so you can ask him to move. My friend Andrew, speaking of, my dad is calling me right now. I'll call him later. Well, my, Andrew, my friend Andrew in college would always tell me this, prayer moves the hand that moves the world. Prayer moves the hand that moves the world. Prayer is powerful. And when we pray, we ask God to make an impact. We, when we pray, we ask for God to make a way in our hearts and in our lives and in the lives of others. But when we pray to God and we ask him to move and we ask him for power, we pray knowing that he can do those things. Prayer helps us to realize the great power and influence God has. And notice how at the beginning of this template, everything starts off with God and the world and others, and then it's us. And I think sometimes in our prayers, we go to us first. Can I get an amen? I do that all the time. I'm guilty. When I, when I pray, I pray for the Lord to bless me. I pray for the Lord to, to help me, to help my wife, right? I'm, but I'm, I, oftentimes my prayers are about me. And if, if your prayers are about you, that's okay. I'm not saying that you're doing anything wrong. But notice Jesus' template to acknowledge God first and to acknowledge the needs of others first, okay? Because that'll help you to love. That'll help you to, to be shaped like him. Why? Because the more time we spend with God, the more we act like him. The more time we go to prayer, the more time we pray for others, the bigger our hearts will be and the more love we can show just like him. And after we do that, then Jesus tells us to ask God to give us each our daily bread, Okay? Who's here ready for lunch or nutrition or whatever you guys call it? I grew up in Florida, and so, like, we didn't have nutrition, okay? So California, California loves you guys, okay? But who, you guys are ready? You guys are hungry? I'm hungry. I was up at 5 a.m. this morning, so I'm pretty, I'm pretty hungry. But most of us know when our next meal is and know what we're eating. 
Most of us brought our own lunch today or we brought money so that we could eat. There's people around the world that don't have that. Will you pray for them? But because we have those things, because we're so fortunate, what does daily bread mean? Well, I think if we look a little bit deeper, daily bread can be referred to as asking God to provide to us what is vital. Asking God to bless us with what is necessary. Asking God to give us the things we need so that we could keep going. To ask God for the essentials of your life. We pray because it forms the way we see God, but we also pray because God is able to help us in our need. God is able to help us in our need. I remember, uh, how many of you drive? Raise your hand. How many of you drive and don't have a car? Raise your hand. I know the struggle, brother. I didn't get, I didn't get my, my license until I was a senior in high school. But I remember like my sophomore year of college, um, I, had, I had a lease with, with Ford. And after the three years, my lease was done. So I had to give the car back, right? And it's just me, my mom, and my little brother. And there's three of us in the house and there's only two cars now. And all of us have jobs. I'm, I'm serving full-time at the church. I have places to be. He has places to be. She has places to be. And I'm sitting to myself frustrated, right? Because I have to rely on mom to drop me off or I have to walk to work and it, it just, it stinks, right? And I remember being frustrated at work and I remember sitting in my car, well, sitting in my mom's car and thinking to myself, like, this situation sucks. Like, I wish I was in a better situation. I wish I had more money. I wish that, like, that things could just be better, right? I'd see all my friends and, and they would have parents that would pay for them to have a car. I didn't have that situation. And I remember being frustrated, but then for some reason, I just felt like, you know what, let me just pray about it. Because I was learning about prayer at church. I was like, well, I'm gonna pray to God and ask for a car. And I said, Lord, I don't know how you're gonna do it. I don't know what it's gonna look like, whether you give me money or a car comes, but Lord, I, I trust you. Will you help me? I kid you not, one week later, my sister is at her friend's house and the friend's mom says, hey, do you guys need an extra car? We've had a car that's just been sitting in the garage for years and we don't really use it. That day, my mom drove my future car home, and I still drive that car to today. Prayer works. God sees your needs. Thank you. Guys, God sees your needs, but he also provides for your needs. When we call on him, we call on him because he has power, because he has the ability to help you to do so. But not only do we ask for our needs, we also ask God to forgive us of our sins and lead us not into temptation, because all of us have spiritual needs too. All of us have sin habits that need healing. All of us have things we wrestle with God from within. God wants to help you in every way of your life. And God also has the power to help you in every area of your life. Because friends, God wants to set you free. Free from your sin, free from your shame, free from your guilt. He wants to build you up. He wants to tell you who you really are. He wants to show you what you're worth. He wants to protect you and he wants to provide for you. So we're taught how to pray. We're taught what to pray for. We've come to know important things about prayer, but Jesus wants to share another story to better explain the importance of prayer. And so it says this in Luke 11, verse five. And Jesus says, suppose you have a friend and you go to him at midnight and say, friend, lend me three loaves of bread. And a friend of, of mine is on a journey and has come to me and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, don't bother me. The door is already locked and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. Verse eight says, I tell you, even though, this is Jesus. He says, I tell you, even though he will not give, get up and give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find Knock, and the door will be opened to you. This parable is interesting, right? There's two friends, and Jesus is saying, let's say like we're in, we're in the perspective of the first friend. He's saying, it's late at night. You need to help your other friend. You need to make some food. You're going to one friend in, in need of help. You need ingredients. You need whatever to cook, and you're knocking on the door. It's late at night. You need help from your friend. He basically says, his friends, your friend's not gonna help you just because they love you, okay? But your friend will help you based on your persistence. 
That's my best friend right there, Gio. Everyone say hi to Gio. Gio is uh, Miss Hitchcock's fiance. And uh, I used to live with Gio. And one thing Gio and I love to do is play video games. Who here loves to play video games? Raise your hand. And I love to play 2K. And if any of you play 2K, you don't want to... You don't want my smoke. I will destroy every single one of you. I'm currently on a win streak with Gio. But one thing Gio and I love to do is play video games, and we love to play 2K. And there's, there'd be times where it was like late at night, we just finished watching a movie or whatever, and I look, at, I look over at him. Carly's already smiling because she's, she's seen it before. But I look over at Gio, I'm like, hey, you want to play? And Gio's like, nah, 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 nah. Are you sure you don't want to play? And we kind of do that to one another, right? And it's the persistence that eventually gives in, that Gio gives in and we play. And then oftentimes we'll play till like one o'clock in the morning. I'm like, bro, what am I doing with my life? I got work in the morning, right? Okay, so don't do that. Don't be, don't be like that. But notice how persistence matters. Being persistent matters. And God says, be persistent in your prayers. Why? Because realize who you're talking to. Realize that the person you're talking to has the ability to help you and give you what you need. So are you willing to be persistent? Are you willing to constantly knock on the door and ask God to bless you, ask God to help you? We pray because God wants to provide for us. God doesn't want us to be shy when we come to him because he wants to hear from us. I'm about to close. I'm gonna share one last story of Jesus and then I'm going to show, share with you one last story from myself, okay? It says this um, in Luke 11, verses 10 through 13. For everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which one of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more? How much more will your Father in heaven, God, give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? If humans who are broken, immoral, and sinful can still show love and compassion and kindness to their children, how much greater can a good, holy, and perfect Father give you? We pray because God wants to bless us. God wants to bless us. Four years ago, um, I really wanted to go to this concert. Drake is my favorite artist. Drake, I don't know how you guys feel about Drake, but Drake was awesome when I was in high school. I get it, I get it. I'm, I'm old, I'm irrelevant now, whatever. But Drake is my favorite artist. And four years ago, I really wanted to go to his concert. And I remember one summer, I was, I was a busboy and I was cleaning dishes and I would get tips. And, and I told myself that I was gonna save up money every time I worked so that I can go to the concert. And my biggest plan was this, I was gonna, I was gonna save up money for myself, for my ticket, for my girlfriend's ticket, which is now my wife, Monet, um, and I was gonna buy merch. And so in my head, I'm thinking, I'm gonna save up $600. Whoa, yeah, well, it's possible if you save, okay? And so I'm, I'm working, I'm working really hard, I'm scrubbing dishes, right, I'm getting tipped out. And, and I'm trying to build up my savings account. And for some reason that summer, it was just really hard to keep the money in my savings. Emergencies would happen, situations at home, right? Because my, my, my family was struggling at the time, so I'd have to have, I would have to help pay for groceries, and I needed money for gas, and all these things, right? And so I kept taking, I didn't want to, but I kept taking from my savings. And I'll never forget, I was on Rinaldi, kind of over by the, uh, the 405, and I was at the Shell, ga Shell gas station. And I'm sitting in my car, and I have like no gas, and I have $4 in my checking account, and I have $90 in my savings. And it's a Wednesday and I don't get paid till Friday. And I remember sitting and I remember being upset and frustrated like, and I like smacked my, my, my driver um, wheel. And I remember like just talking to God about it and be like, God, you know how bad I wanna go to this concert. Like I know this is dumb, but you know how hard I've worked. You know how bad I wanna go to this. And I, and I remember saying like, Lord, I'm sorry if this sounds dumb, but Jesus, if you want me to use these $90 to put gas in my tank, will you just tell me? And if not, will you provide another way? And I kid you not, God at that moment told me, use the $90 and trust me. And it wasn't an audible voice like you hear my voice right now. It was a voice I heard in my heart. So I moved the money over. I pay for my gas because it's $90 because I drive a gas guzzler. It is what it is. And life goes on. I keep trying to save, I keep trying to save. Two weeks later, 
My dad gives me a call and he says, hey, I wanna take you, I wanna buy tickets for you and your sister and Monet for you guys to go to the Drake concert. And I was thinking, yes, Jesus answered prayers, baby, let's go. And so we go to Ticketmaster, he sends us the money, we go to Ticketmaster, we buy our tickets, okay? We have our QR code, a week later, we go down to Inglewood to the forum and I'm scanning my QR code and we get in, we're, we're all excited, like, let's go. Migos is the opening act and Migos is going, shout out to Carly and the ATO, okay? And then I noticed that there's people in our seats. And I was like, uh-uh, not today, brother. I'm watching Drake, you feel me? And so I go up and I was like, I'm so sorry, guys, but you guys have our tickets. And they're like, what do you mean? And so I showed them my QR code and I was like, hey, these are all of our tickets. And they're like, we have these tickets too, except they had the physical tickets. And so I was like, well, okay, well, let's go and talk. And so we go to the lady at the desk and I was like, I don't know how this happened. I bought it from Ticketmaster. And the lady says, unfortunately, son, you've been scammed. And we're gonna give them the seats because they have the physical ticket. And I remember just being super sad and thinking to myself, but God, you told me to trust me. You told me to trust you. And I'm thinking to myself, I have, like, I have no money. How am I going to, I'm going to have to find a way to sit in the nosebleeds. And, but the lady keeps typing. And Migos is going, and I'm like, man, I want to go in there so bad. And then the lady hands me an envelope. And she says, son, these are your tickets. And they're absolutely free. And also we want you to know that you now have better seats. And we sat at the lower level floor. And the, and the lady said, enjoy your night, enjoy the concert. And as we're sitting down, we're walking to my seats, I'm like shaking, cause I'm like, oh my gosh. And I looked to my sister, I'm like, Simone, check your bank account. All the money went back into our bank account. That night, everybody was worshiping and praising Drake. And the only person on my mind that night was God. And over and over, and I, I kept hearing him say, just trust me. Friends, I don't know where any of you guys are in your spiritual journey. I don't know who here believes in Jesus, who here doesn't believe in Jesus, but I promise you that when you place your faith in Jesus Christ, when you pray, know that he is for you, know that he is listening to you, and know that he has good things for you. God wants to bless you, even if it's as silly as a Drake concert, God wants to bless you. Why? Because he's your father, and fathers give good gifts. My last thing is this, we pray because it works. We pray because it works and God answers us every single time. I love you guys, I really do. I love you guys and I'm praying for you guys and I pray that you guys can be encouraged to keep praying and to keep trusting and believing in the Lord. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I thank you so, so much. Lord, I thank you for this morning. I thank you for waking us up, Jesus. I'm sorry that we woke up to some scary news. But Jesus, I'm thankful that you've kept us safe. I'm thankful that you're good. I'm thankful that you love us. I thank you that your word is something we can build our lives upon. Father, I thank you for my friends in the room. Shout out to my shepherd homies, but I pray for every single student here. I pray for their relationship with you, Lord. I pray that they can be strengthened, that they can be changed and transformed and that they can be moved by the great love that you have for them. Lord, we love you so much. We thank you that as we pray right now, you hear our prayers. You see us, you know us, you love us, and you have good things for us. Jesus, we love you, we thank you, we praise you. But most importantly, Jesus, we trust you. And it's in your name we pray these things. Amen.